What's up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Hive. My name is Zach Hernandez, and as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Matt Llewellyn. And today we are going to discuss whether or not 49ers defensive coordinator Robert Sala is on the hot seat. Matt, take it away. He should be. Um, I think at, other than last year, which was a Super Bowl year, where you have somebody as dynamic as Nick Bosa was, uh, NFL or well, NFC Rookie of the Year, um, for the defensive players, I man, I just I think the defense is underwhelmed. I think his scheme is too simplistic, so it's really simple to learn. But he doesn't make adjustments, so it's simple to figure out. And I think the leash is getting a little short because the one thing that I've noticed um, out of Robert Sala defenses, especially on like coming into the game against scripted plays on first quarter, first drive, whatever, whatever, the defense typically comes out flat, um, and you know, 2018, this team struggled with forcing turnovers. 2019, a lot of forced turnovers. 2020, we're back to struggling forcing turnovers. Um, we've seen lapses in discipline and gap assignments. We've seen lapses in, you know, the team making mental mistakes. It's just one of those things where that at some point you have to look at the coach and be like, hey, man, like, I know this is a simple scheme to learn, but you're not doing the team any favors by not adjusting what you're doing. And, you know, it's especially, especially with the coverages. So sometimes he'll throw blitzes out there, but then he runs the same coverages and it's there's, you know, again, for the last three, four years, we've struggled third and long. Every time we get third and long, I know exactly what's going to happen. They're going to give up the first down because they're playing too soft, you know, um, thankfully he hasn't done that thing where the defensive end is spying the running back out of the backfield and covering wheel routes like he used to do. Um, so at least he's learned there, but he still plays way too soft on third down and long, you know, instead of, you know, keeping things in front of you in a way that, you know, you can run up and make the tackle. They leave the defenders leave way too much space. And so the run after the catch just kills us or they find a soft spot in the zone and it's just, you know, what's going to be there. And the, those are the type of routes that just, you know, kill us. And then the defense is gassed and Sometimes it's on the offense, but a lot of times it's because the defense cannot get off the field on third down or force turnovers. And so, yep. you know, injuries aside, Robert Sala needs to take some of the blame for this going forward. Yep. And, you know, I I do think he should be on the hot seat, if not right now, if this continues very soon. Um, last season, he benefited from the best defensive roster in the NFL uh, from from top to bottom. And he was getting all the accolades, all of the media coverage, his hot, fiery defensive coordinator who gets his players hyped up. And look, I love that he's a player's coach. These players seem really and they really enjoy to play uh, playing for him. They they want to produce, they want to get his respect, but at the same time, he's not putting them in position to win and, and to be successful. He's asking a lot yeah. of them and he's not making them look great. And I just feel like, you know, how many times do we have to get beat on the same thing before you make an adjustment. And he's starting to make adjustments, but it's still too late. You can't make an adjustment yeah. when you're down three touchdowns. Okay. Now maybe I should change things up. No, it, it, it's not that it's not that difficult. You need to make a change and you need to do it sooner. Um, like particularly Sunday against the dolphins. I understand injuries, but he wasn't giving Brian Allen any help. Um, and I know that I believe it was cover cover three. But he needed a guy to, to be put on top or at least shift it to where Brian Allen wasn't completely alone. Right. She and and, and Allen, over there. Yes, exactly. And Allen wasn't staying on top of the receiver, Devontae Parker. He was kind of letting him get beat, which you're, that's the main thing with cover three you're not supposed to do is let anybody get behind you. But he should have seen mm -hmm. that. And he should have said, you know, and, and Kyle Shanahan on the press conference today, even was asked why wasn't Ward moved to corner and maybe a guy like Tavarius Moore brought in to play uh, safety or, or vice versa, you know, and, and pretty much he said, you know, we, we didn't give any uh, reps to Tavarius Moore. We had no idea. It just seemed kind of like a, a, a colossal failure from top down. Yeah. And I thought that was like a bailout answer when they said, mm -hmm. when they asked him about Tavarius Moore in particular, and he said, well, yeah, we drafted him at corner, but he hasn't played corner here. He hasn't played corner in two years. And it's like, well, Tarverius Moore not playing corner for two years would have been better than what Brian Allen yep. threw out there because yep. that was terrible.
And, you know, you talked about, you know, Salah being fiery and this and this and that. I haven't seen that from him this year. And the other thing I haven't seen from this team is swagger and energy that they had last year. They don't have it. They seem deflated. They seem like, uh, you know, it's it's just going with the motions. I think that, you know, again, there is a little bit of that Super Bowl hangover, and I think that they're jo- just beaten down by these injuries, and that's had an effect on the morale of the team. And so, you know, when you see and, – and pair that with Robert Sala not making the defensive adjustments like you talked about until it's too late. I think Robert Sala is actually in danger of – his voice falling on deaf ears. I think he's starting to lose that defense because I don't see the same level of urgency and swagger and sharpness and energy that we saw last year. Um, And that's concerning to me. Um, They just look just a step lackadaisical on everything. And I think that that at the end of the day reflects on coaching. And because Kyle lets Sala do his thing and Kyle doesn't really get involved on the defense, um, ultimately that is on Robert Sala and uh, Coach K on the defensive line and, you know, defensive back coach. Um, you know, it's it's on all those guys, and they got to get it together. Otherwise, you know, the the one thing that we know about regimes that have disappointing seasons, you know, they'll give the head coach and the general manager some leeway. But guess what happens? Coordinators start getting axed and replaced. Yeah. So you know, if they don't get it together soon, um, injuries or not, there's not going to be a lot of leftover excuse for Robert Sala and company on the defense. No, not at all, and. That's a good point. He hasn't really been fiery this year. And, and, you know, what's there to be fiery about? I mean, besides a sag or a few plays, which, by the way, I just need to say real quick, seeing Quan dance and, and showboat after getting a sack when you're down three or four scores, it's just like, what the hell are you doing, man? Yeah. Stop. You look like a fool. I hate that. And again, that, that reflects on Solo. It does. It does. Because that's the culture that he's cultivated. Right. That's what he allows. Like, when you watch a team on special teams, right, and they kick a kickoff through the end zone, but you see all 11 guys on a kick team, or 10, because, you know, the kicker doesn't really count, but you see the 10 guys on kick coverage run through the back of the end zone. They sprinted all the way down and through Mm -hmm. the back. That's something that you can say, hey, man, like, there's there's good discipline there because they're hustling through the play. You know what I mean? And and I just don't see that with this team. I don't don't see the same hustle, and I don't see the same – the mental strength. Um, Quan looks absolutely like he's regressed from last year, um, just yeah. from a, a mental and decision making standpoint. Not that he can't physically do things, because I think that he's still, you know, one of the fastest and most physical linebackers. That play that he was covering Shaheen on that rub route on that touchdown, it's like he got out there as phys- he reacted as quick as you possibly could, and he didn't get there because that's just great play design. But you know, there was the game against Arizona on the the third and fourteen or whatever when, you know, he just lost track of of the wide receiver and then it's like it's first down and it's just like, yeah. or I'm sorry, he he was following the wide receiver and lost mm-hmm. track of the line of scrimmage and Kyler yeah. Murray was able to scramble. Right and it's just right like in. those right. mental mistakes, those those things reflect coaching. Um, you know, if if the coach doesn't have the team buttoned up, those type of things are going to happen. And it seems like this regime is very player friendly, but sometimes you know. You need a kick in the butt to, to get going and get motivated and do the right thing. It can't always be like, hey, like, good job, guys. Like, I'm fiery. Look at me. I'm like rah, rah, and all that stuff. And that's fine. There's a time and place. But sometimes it gets down to nut cutting time, and you've got to jump on people and make that, you know, make them do the hard thing that they don't want to do um, yeah. and, and get after players when they're not doing the right thing. And I just think that that's missing from this defense this year. Yeah, and, you know, we understand there's injuries. We're not asking for this defense to hold teams to 10 points a game from from here on out. Right. But we want to see improvements. I, I want to see him do the best with what he has. And right now it's almost like he's just kind of, you know, shrugging his shoulders like, well, I'm injured. What do you expect? We're going to give up 30 a game. That's just how it is. No, you still need to call a good game. Right. You still need to make adjustments. And you still need to – You can't, your players you can't let Ryan Fitzpatrick look like the second coming of John uh, Elway. You can't you no, just can't do it. No, not at all. Not at all. So, I mean, it remains to be seen. We'll see if he does improve and, and get his, his act together. But if not, I'd argue he's definitely on the hot seat. And I think you agree with me there. Yeah. Yep. But I think that's going to do it for us today, guys. I want to thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Hive. If you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, like button, and also share this video. Get it out there. Ask your friends, do you think, uh, excuse me, do you think Robert Sala is on the hot seat? And drop a comment below with your answer. Go ahead and click the bell for notifications. Make sure you turn them on so you don't miss a video. And until next time, go.
Go Niners.